Also, I have uh, guests in the studio this morning. I have um, Osebun Suamwa, and uh, Honorable Obi Amwa is, uh, is a lawyer, but also a member of parliament for Ikafim South. Um, he's currently a deputy minister. Uh, and then also a former uh, deputy sports minister as well as sports minister, respectively. So, as, as in is, we're here to talk a lot of football matters, but also issues uh, concerning the minority in parliament, where they are insisting they want to boycott the issuance of the Ghana card. And we know that the National Identification Authority had itemized or categorized certain institutions to be in the first phase of the issuance of the Ghana card. And uh, they already have a statement in the offing, and uh, we'll take a look at that. We'll, we'll start with that, by the way. But also here with us is um, Joseph Niyadekoka. He is the chairman of the NDC for Greater Accra. Thanks for joining me. It's been a while, the two of you. That's fine. How yes. are you? I'm fine, sir. Looking great in your... Is it a... Navy blue? Navy blue suit. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Blue black. We, we like to call blue, it blue, blue black, black in a part of the world. <laughs> That's it. Mm. Obi, good morning to you. Good morning, Roland. Yes, Obi is, a, is an ardent uh, viewer of the show, always giving us uh, some good pointers when we go wayward, so to speak. And it's always a good lesson point when we have him, <laughs> knowing that he has our back. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm not too, I uh, have terrible code. Yeah. Mm. But I said I would come because I heard this, my good friend was coming. <laughs> So if, I said you're I come. Be, if you're to be living in the UK, they'll say yeah. that you have flu, flu yes. which uh, could lead to you quarantine. Being quarantine. quarantine. <laughs> yes, we need to cordon off yeah. your sitting area. Yes, <laughs> but because uh, it's here, we will live with it. Yes, as, as chairman of Greater Accra in DC, <laughs> yes. as former chairman of Olympiakos, <laughs> yes, as former chairman of Olympics, <laughs> and former vice of DFE. That's correct. And all that you can think of. Charlie. I said no today. Uh, you, you have to come takes, you have to and face off. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. my very good friend. Mm. Uh, but before we get into the mainstream football matters, because we know that when we start, we're never ending. It's, uh, it's, it started <coughs> prior to the premiering on Wednesday evening, so to speak. And since then, the airways have no known peace. But the minority uh, has announced that a boycott of the registration exercise a parliament for the national ID card citing legal procurement and most concerns, or uh, cost concerns. In a statement, the minority leader in Tamale South MP, Harry Naidusu, said the NIA has not been honest with the people of Ghana over the course of the project with two figures. They cite $1.4 billion and then $293 million US dollars, according to the report. And then they move on to say that um, they, they give us some brief history and said the latest attempt under the Kufadwa administration uh, has also seen several postponements. They give us all that. And they said, uh, but the exercise expert to begin today in parliament will not see the minorities participating. And they state some reasons, even with the criteria for um, getting registered to get access to the Ghana card. And, and we know that. They, copiously uh, stated and sourced has been the NIA boss, that's uh, Professor Ken Atefa, on the documents that will be needed uh, for registration. Uh, but we know what also the regulations of the law says. So we'll try to take a look at that this morning. Uh, good morning to all of you. Thank you, Roland. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Let me start with you. The concern being raised by the minority on the Ghana card, essentially. Uh, we've talked about how useful the card will be, but uh, we seem to be having these bottlenecks as and when. But the NI has uh, started the exercise in earnest. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, good morning to your cherished viewers. Well, I started hearing about the complaints um, from news items like your station's news item, quoting the former president, John Mahama, as saying that the ID registration process, the Ghana card, is an attempt to denationalize some Ghanaians, and that this attempt will be resisted fiercely. So I'm not surprised that the minority has gone ahead to issue this statement. I'm sure it's part of their attempt to fiercely resist the issuance of the identification cards. Um, I read through the statement. I didn't really see where the problem was coming from. 
and why they think they should issue a statement in the first place, and then say that they are boycotting. In boycotting, I don't really even understand what they mean. But what are the facts? If we are to respond to what they have stated as some of their concerns, one major concern is that the NIE is here to brief Parliament about their operations mm. because they have called for it. And if NIE has been briefed Parliament yet, then they don't see why they should take part in the process. There are two responses here. The first response is that the whole agreement for NIE has been submitted to Parliament, and Parliament has debated and passed it. Number two, the Act governing the whole process had to be amended. And the Act was brought to Parliament, and Parliament has approved the amendments. To the extent that even at the constitution stage, the minority actively took part in it, and even praised the way we've gone about it. So it's a bit baffling that they will come back this way. The other answer is the fact that, yes, the acts that in spite of the submission of the document to Parliament and the amendment of the act, they still want to talk to NIA. Last Friday, the majority chief whip, uh, giving the business statements on the floor of the House, stated that when we resume tomorrow, when we come to Parliament tomorrow, the NIA would appear before the Committee of the Whole for any issues and questions to be asked. Now, my understanding is that today, Parliament is not sitting. Some members may go there if NIA is around for them to be registered. But tomorrow, when Parliament is sitting, NIA will still carry out the registration. And indeed, if you are a member of Parliament, it doesn't mean that's the only place that you can be registered. So that shouldn't really raise an issue. What I heard the former president saying is the fact that the document you require for identification to be registered, it's only a few Ghanaians who have those documents. So what will happen to the rest of Ghanaians? But if you remember how we've gone about voter registration in this country, where you're required to bring documentary proof of your citizenship. Even where you don't have it, you're required to bring guarantors. And then guarantors will come and vouch for you that you are eligible to be registered as Ghanaian. In this particular case, we've even gone further. Fine, you can bring guarantors, but they should swear an oath before a commission of oaths. So if you remember, the Chief Justice recently advertised for recruitment of about 2,500 or so commissions of oath. Meaning that at every point, they expect a commission of oath to be at the registration point. So that if indeed you don't have any documents and you have a close relative who can vouch for you, that relative will swear an oath. Who will bear that cost? The nation is bearing the cost. Who will bear that cost? The cost of the... Because of, I know commissioners of oath, when they undertake their services... I, I expect the nation to bear it, but even if the nation doesn't bear it, and you really need a Ghana card, which is so important, I think you should be able to afford it. But I expect the nation... It's a very good question. I expect the nation to bear it. But the bottom line is that if you're not holding a document, you are not barred from registry. If your parent can vouch for you, a parent confirms with an oath. If you don't have parents and you bring relatives, the NIA agrees with you, they swear, and then you're registered. And this is what we've done with voter registration. So I don't see where the denationalization comes in. And I don't see where you see, some people are being barred from registering or some people will be some people will be foreclosed from registering. I don't And you're and you are saying that this aspect in terms of the the alternative of uh, bringing in a guarantor is part of the amendment. Yes, let me quote it for you, I beg you. Please do. <coughs> we have National Identity Registry, Register Amendment Act, 
2017, Act 950. It says Section 8 of Act 750, that's the original Act, is amended by the substitution of for subsection 1 of 1. The authority shall require an individual who applies for an entry to be made in the register mm. to submit any of the following identity documents. Mm. A birth certificate, mm -hmm. a valid passport, a valid residence permit, a valid certificate of acquired citizenship, and any other information as may be required by the authority. Any other information. So the authority may even decide that I'm holding a driving license or I'm holding an old national ID card, which some of us have. I have my own national ID card. The authority may even accept these cards. But beyond that, it goes on to say B, by the substitution of subsection 2 of where the applicant is unable to submit any of the documents specified under subsection 1, mm -hmm. the authority shall require a relative of the applicant to identify the applicant under oath or two persons determined by the board to identify the applicant under oath where the applicant has no known relatives. Mm. No known relatives, assuming that for sake of any argument. You don't even have I don't have any. I can say Roland and Ade. You know me too well. We've grown up all in these In the years. community or in wherever. Community. So, bad for me. And they will be accepted. And this is the law which was brought to Parliament in 2017. Is it possible that beyond these, um, the authority could also accept National Health Insurance card or any other card for them? It's their discretion. That's why I said any other information as may be required by the authority. It's possible. It's not foreclosed, except that if you're not careful, anybody will bring anything and then challenges will come in. So they're saying that if you follow this, birth certificate, you don't have it. Valid passport, you don't have it. Those who have acquired residence permit, they are the ones talked about here. And valid certificate for those who have acquired citizenship. If you don't have any of this, and any other information, I'll go there and say, oh, I don't have birth certificate, I don't have passport, but I have driver's license. Mm. I have national ID, the old national ID. Okay. I have other identification. They accept it, we move on. I have SNIT card here, which confirms my bag and everything. They accept it, we move on. If they don't accept it, then bring somebody who will vouch for you. Yeah. If it's a relative, only one person. Right. I, I do understand that, but just to make this interjection, uh, we have some categories of people, mm -hmm. not Ghanaians. They may be coming from other parts of the sub-region. Let's say Fulani headsmen mm. or other people of such nature who necessarily may also not have the proper documentation of the country from which they're coming mm -hmm. and then may not have anybody to vouch for them because they don't come from the community. Mm. Um, whoever can vouch for them is one of their kind. So, how do they get to be part of the national? Let's think of solving the Ghanaian problem first before you bring non Ghanaians because the categories are different. But that's discriminatory if you make the statement. No, the categories are different. Ghana well, I do card. understand that. Ghana but the, card, but the Ghana Ghanaian card is, is for both national that's why and they have said. That, that's why they've said that you have a valid residence permit. You don't just walk into the country and walk around and say that I'm a full headsman, so I'm here 100 years. You stay here even if you are a co-host. You have to regularize it. Yes, if you are a certain period, you need a valid residence permit. That's number one. If for any reason you've acquired citizenship, it shows, it shows here that a valid certificate of acquired citizenship. So for these categories, the law has provided for it. But if you tell me I'm here, I don't have anybody, I'm a full of the so register me, it will bring chaos. In any case, this has also been adopted as a coerced card. And if you look at the document which was brought to Parliament, huge document between the parties, all these things were provided there. These are the pictures showing the kind of card we're supposed to have, ECOWAS updated design of NID card. All these things are ECOWAS is also losing sight, sight of these people who cross our borders illegally. May no, have been here for 50 us, years. It's for us uh, to gather here, here. Years. It's for us to gather here to make sure that anybody who comes here has stayed uh, in accordance well, with we the law. Ha we have not been able to. That's no, a reality on the ground. But it's not an excuse. That's why all these that, things That's are an coming. excuse. Is that not a good excuse? That is why this we want, we want is want them, important. For example, uh, just uh, with all due respect, to be part of the whole data yeah, so that we can use even that data to I track give. those people. They can pay good taxes. They can pay relevant taxes to us. We will know where they are and how, how they be. I agree with you. Uh -huh. But let's not 
deviate from the main issue. Okay. Main issue being that the minority say that they are boycotting this whole process. As for boycotts, I mean, it's part of the process. But my major worry is where the former president came in to say that it's an attempt to denationalize. Well, he's gone around the country. It may have been uh, echoing the views of people. Oh, but t tell the whole story. Tell the whole story because this is not the first time. Earlier, the impression had been created. When they wanted to start, the impression had been created that if you don't have those documents, that's the end of you. Very well. But <laughs> your, views on, on, to your, your views on the discussion so far, sir. Yes. Uh, let me say good morning to your esteemed viewer, yourself, and my very good friend who is uh, copiously quoting from uh, uh, the, 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 the law. The, the, the law. Yes. Unfortunately, the law, there are some flaws in it. Um, when the NI boss met our party, we asked how many Ghanaians have got birth certificate and how many Ghanaians have got passports. He tells us that 7 million Ghanaians have got passports and 2 million Ghanaians have got birth certificate. That's very interesting. And we asked him how many people are, do you intend registering? And he said he intended registering 30 million people. So out of the 30 million people, only 7 million have got the requisite document that they are talking about. That's the birth certificate. You've got 2 million people having birth certificate, and then 7 million people having but that's nice. passport. No. That's nice. The 2 million people are you part needed for of the passport. Are, are needed for the passport. So the mm -hmm. 2 million people who have got birth certificate yes. are part of the people who have got passport. So that's in so. effect, mm -hmm. you have only 7 million people. That's not who, my understanding of what you're saying. Yeah, that is what the 2 million people, before you can get a passport, you must have a birth certificate. But the fact that you have a birth certificate doesn't mean that you have a passport. No, no, no. Listen. I think that's also no, an asset. Yeah, 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 that's a good coefficient. Good coefficient, coefficient that but we are, we are assuming that the seven million people have got passport. Two and million, he's proving to you that it's the wrong computer. Well, well, well. That's the wrong computer. Well, 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 who has a passport. Very well. Well, let's assume that. It so leaves us with 21 million. So it leaves us with 21 million who haven't got no documents at all. To be able to participate. Supposedly. So, well, that's it because here's the catch. So, we are going to disenfranchise at least 21 million people oh. because they don't have the passport and they don't have the birth certificate. But they have made provisions well, for those who don't and have the, those who, the those, two. Those who or swear, can, can satisfy the two criteria to be catered those for. Those who swear that for David must also be in possession of. Those How documents. do we get all those people to vote? How many people yeah. are on our register? Um, no, 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 no. Listen, listen to me. You are talking about giving every Ghanaian a card. You are not talking about voting. No. Every Ghanaian, every person they resident in they Ghana, said, including the they Ghanaians. They said they want to register 30 million Ghanaians. Even from childbirth. If, if you are one year or six months, you'll be registered. Yes. You understand? So every Ghanaian, we are not talking about voting. We are talking about Ghana card mm -hmm. with every Ghanaian. Once you are here, you are born Ghana, whatever you are acquired by citizenship, you must be registered. And that's the problem. That's the, that's the, that's the problem. That many people haven't got the supposed document that you are talking about. So we are saying that, look, we've got certain cars that are already in the existence. You, like, you mentioned the driving license, which is biometric. You mentioned the voter's ID, which is biometric. So with these cars, all your details, your Ghanaian has already been captured. The national health insurance has uh, been captured. Is, is biometric. biometric. Hmm. You see, so if you are looking for, you are, and you are going biometric as well on this particular instance, and you've got documents which are already biometric. So okay. why, why do you, why, why do you delete those documents from the exercise? I rather ask somebody to come and vouch for for somebody where a biometric document is already there, has captured your finger, have even captured your eyes and all those things. So that document should be a legitimate document to be to, to use for the Ghana card. That's what we are saying. Because that will give you at least 60 million people. Extra. 60 million. Because if you look at the voters register, we've got 60 million people who have been registered on the voters register with biometric uh, 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 identity. So what are you talking about? Why do you exclude those things? Tell what you are talking about. Because if you go to certain villages, I'm sure uh, the, the president, the former president, said in his village, some village somewhere. When you go there, everybody, nobody there has even got a birthday because you are you are born in the house or the the, the local uh, 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 witch doctor, whatever you call the person, and then that's it. 
and you you just go in the system. And where are you going to get a birth certificate from? The people there, them, about 400 of them, immediately have been disenfranchised. You see, so let us be very, we shouldn't do politics with these things. Nobody is doing that, politics. I, I, I think mean, we have to put the issue into the, 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 it's, the, not the, about, the, it's not about politics. I'm just yeah, you see, my, my brother here mentioned the, the president making yeah. a statement. The party, he was not being political. He was just giving the, the facts of the case that when we do this, we disenfranchise almost 60 million people, particularly 400 of his people down there who have got nothing, no passport, no birth certificate, nothing. So let us all come to and look at this thing holistically. And they have got the problem of a document indicating that the whole thing is going to cost $1.4 billion. Uh, dollars. $1.2 billion. $1 spread billion. over 50 Exactly. And then the chief executive comes and says that $296 million. For the first year. So what, are we talking? So what, is, what is the cost? You uh, must know the So cost each year work. spread over 15, you get that. You cost. see, but when you, but when you try to do the initial layout, you see, initial you financial. See, you, you remember, you remember the, uh -huh. there was a, uh, uh, this uh, interconnectivity, is that what you call it? Right? Which had been spread over 25 years, zero investment. And we, we said that. Oh, you mean the uh, interoperability? Operability, correct. You know, we said that spreading things over 15, 25 years was not the best. You who remember? Who said? I, I, why are you not in this country? I, I a, am. A I'm not sure there was an argument made that um, if you have a certain financial plan <laughs> and that outlay <laughs> spreads <laughs> over 15 <laughs> years, in terms of that and level we, of we amortization. Were, we were in this wrong. country when, when people were kicking against how, why do you go and do a project over 15 For that project. Exactly. So how come with this one you are able to accept? That over a number of well, years, well, the projects that, are different. They are not. They are not. The, 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 it's not a matter of the projects being different. Okay. It, it's a matter of being consistent. That's 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 the so you said, you said This one smacks of double standard. Exactly. Okay. Right. Point is made. Yeah. Oh, you wanted to make. Yes. Mm. Um, my major challenge with the NDC mm. is that when an issue comes up, instead of Finding solutions, they find problems. <laughs> a well, glass, a, <laughs> other the glasses. This is half I, don't, I think this is a I just read the issue about the Fulani people. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, they behave as if, for instance, acquiring a birth certificate is the is the most difficult thing in the world. The, if you care to know, the birth and death registry just recently, over the past year, has been automated, has been computerized across the country. And even where they don't have specific mm -hmm. offices, they are able to mobilize people to move to such communities mm -hmm. just to register them. It will be. It will be. So so I, I was it expecting be. them to say that. Be certificate. Let's encourage have, people. Have, have you tried going to get a birth certificate? I just yes, want you recently. this morning to try and yes, get a birth certificate. Listen, just recently, in my constituency, the birth and death registry moved there mm -hmm. for three days and just went around the community registering them. So what is the big deal about having tried? So you're saying it's by mobilization, yes, making yes. sure that you get the right. Yes. The office so is there when you tell yes, them. So goes. let's look at how you make that thing more efficient and how everybody will have access to better certificates. That will create the impression that... We will that, even get good data. Mm -hmm. with yes. Yeah. That will create the impression that without that, we are the nationalizing people. So you're saying people. all this protest of sitting out and not taking part or participating is needless? Needless. Okay. And they're, they're unnecessarily drawing attention to themselves all for right. every little thing, <laughs> just because JDM yeah. wants to be a candidate. Oh. I don't huh? think that's a fair comment. Oh. But he started it. Oh. And they are joining in with well, the Well, I, I understand that he, he may have started something, but yes. that's not fair. And the, the, if you look at the, what he's talking about, and the cost, the, the cost and everything, it all, What's wrong it was all it? submitted to Parliament. They've given us a first year cost, mm. which is which is broken it down. Right? Maybe you will read it so that you will not say I'm reading my own figures. Okay. Right from the beginning, they've given us this was sent to Parliament mm. months ago, and they should take time to read these things before they make comments. Otherwise, mm. those sitting outside parliament like that, they, they come and tell them and say, oh, is that so? Then they, they start repeating what they have said. But if, if, if they interrogated this document? If, if your own, your own stuff comes, out, comes out to say that they can use $50 million to 
Oh, All right, so let's move on. Let's stop. Somebody will complete that. Oh, are you ready to do better than this? Procurement, somebody says, I put in four million, I could have, because I put in four million, means I could have done it for four million when it didn't cost 100 million. Right. And then we should accept it. Right. Right. Let's move ah, we, we, we know that the minority, have, they've taken a certain position. Exactly. Exactly. Um, it's only dialogue also that will get to improve the exactly. situation. And I guess uh, should, this, should, this bring, sort of. They should bring solutions, mm. they shouldn't make generalized statements. He attempt to did not analyze Ghanaians. You think that you, you, you think you're making the situation? We're talking football. We're talking football. We're talking football. I think when, 60, I mean. when 60 million people have been got birth certificate, mm. you are disnationalizing them. Right. If you are not working around, right? It's okay. It's okay. They are not nationalized. It's okay. Because you are not. Because now you said that you go for a car. Now you want to identify them with a particular document, right? You understand? With that document, you are now bringing something that Mr. Koka. Okay. <laughs> so Koka. Mr. Koka, uh, what, what was brought to you? Tea? Yes, tea. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, now we, we witnessed the premiering of the video, the Anas Arameyan video, of course, we've tagged it, but we know it was put together by his firm, Tiger IPR. And uh, we've seen the ramifications. FIFA has come out with a ban of the Football Association president, so he's now former. Uh, he's also come formally to resign. Now, just this morning, or over the last 12 hours, we're told um, the Ethics Committee Chairman, uh, COP Kofi Buachi, has taken over the association follow, following the fall, fallout of the documentary in itself. No. He's taking over the association. He's taking over, no. Well, okay, well, he's well, taking well, he's, well, taking well it's, it's um, he's supposed, he's supposed <laughs> to... They are investigating what has yes, gone on. Yes, he's yes. supposed to start the process of the investigation. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And then the officials who have been implicated yes. following mm -hmm. the showing of the video, mm -hmm. then like, the right actions will like be taken over. by the committee. Then you said you take over mm -hmm. the whole gala. Yeah. Has, you so, that. <laughs> so, now... From your own perspective, what has transpired up to now? What will be your own take following your experiences with football administration and your general observation over the last, is it 10, 15 years? Yeah. Um, it's more than that, for 10, 15 years. Yeah, he's, you've been on it's football retirement for a long time. Since 70 years. Okay. It will be. Mm. Yes. It's rather unfortunate uh, that uh, we are where we are today. See, but football has got its own peculiarity <coughs> in the sense that there's something called waste and means in football. So what has happened is it's not something that, that is new. Unfortunately, you shouldn't be caught. Ah, I'll depart. <laughs> be careful. Unfortunately, you shouldn't be caught. You should be careful. <laughs> yes. Mm. You see, the waste I mean, even, even in Europe, I mean, a few referees have been caught taking bribes. Mm. Goalkeepers have been influenced. Remember the Zimbabwe goalkeeper Grobella was indicted for uh, betting with the Asian and allowing uh, Liverpool. Was it in Liverpool somewhere? I've forgotten the team. Allowing goals to. Uh, it was a keeper for Liverpool. Liverpool to be betting. So it was that was how he ended the football by being disgraced. So like I said earlier on, these things are things that happen within the system. I keep giving an example. For instance. In the World Cup, if the host team is, is on the verge of being kicked out in the first round, right? FIFA normally frowns upon it and takes a team. Imagine uh, Argentina or Germany hosting the World Cup in the first, first round, they're on the verge of being uh, kicked out. That would kill the game. And FIFA, in, the, in, their, in their own wisdom, find a way to make sure that if they are playing Armenia, Armenia will not win. So this has happened. To be frank, this happened. Once you've been there before, you know that this. Uh, Obia was former minister of uh, deputy minister. Deputy because, minister, uh, or he knows what you're saying. Is, uh, unfortunately, you're implicating him. Or? Unfortunately, <laughs> well, unfortunately, I will not sit down and come and lie. Mm. Unfortunately, is is the uh, is the degree. Of what has transpired over the period, over the, and even in this particular expose, we have about 80 to 90 percent of the referees who are supposed to be in charge of the game be implicated. That is what becomes worrying. Which means, in the past, say four or five years, we, we can we can say that the league matches that were played were one or one were the other skewed in favor of certain teams, right? So. 
is, 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 is something that is worrying. And the fact that this particular FA and this president find themselves in this predicament, uh, I think uh, has brought the whole football game in this country to distribute. And the government has taken a relevant step to ensure that sanity is brought out so we can then go back and, 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 and put things right so that we have believe going forward that the, the next type of game that we are going to engage ourselves in will, will be given a resource that will reflect the, the quality and, 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 and the, 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 the ability of the teams. Right. It's, uh, it, it's rather unfortunate, but uh, it's something that uh, has happened and we have to move on. Now, how are we going to move on? That is where we are now. How are we going to ensure that we sanitize the system, get people who, the, the reforms must come. There are certain, the, the, the situation as it is now, where you have only 123 people calling themselves football people and deciding the destiny of how our game is, is, is played needs to be. So there's serious reform that, 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 that must take place. I, I, right. As you make your own views on this, would you say that um, the steps taken now are the best steps? Is that okay. the Let's start from the beginning. Government? There's no doubt that Ghana football is in crisis. Did you watch the video? I didn't go to the centre, but I watched what was shown on TV through BBC and your mm -hmm. sister station or your competitor. There's no doubt that Ghana football is in crisis. You sus suspected us all along? But not to this degree. To this degree. We've known along that, mm -hmm. all along that some of these things go on, except that you don't have any evidence. You just speculate. But nobody expected it to be at this level. Yeah. And indeed, if the president had not been caught on camera, even if he had not been caught on camera, what has happened, he should have resigned. Exactly. Because you superintend over the whole association. If referees have been caught taking money before they determine the outcome of matches, and you as the DFA president, if he was not even implicated anywhere at all, he should have resigned because of that. Elsewhere, that's what would have happened. But that's outside Africa. Africa would well, be Why are we different? <laughs> when we say democracy, we go and vote, we elect this. Are we different? We are not different. That's number one. <coughs> but here's a case where, unfortunately, he himself is even involved. Now, they are in a crisis because there's no president, there's no vice president. Hmm. And this association is run by the president and the vice president. Day to day affairs. He is the head of Congress. He is the head of executive committee, he's the head of the emergency committee, and he runs, he makes sure that the secretariat is run. In substance, the vice. Now these two people are not available. So what GFA is trying to do is to nominate one of his members to say that, act in the meantime, and let's see whether we can organize anything. Meanwhile, the subscribers to the FA include the president, George Efe Eva has been taken out. These two subscribers are no more at the top of the FA. So what happens at the Register General's Department? One other person, Doku, who is also a subscriber, <laughs> has been mentioned. Then you have Nanabe Yinhu, Nanabe Yinhu, and Isaacato, the General Secretary. These five are the subscribers at the Register General. And if at least three of them have issues and problems, now, who do you then say is the FA as far as registration is concerned? Then two, who calls all these meetings? Now, they, their own statutes will make room for emergency congress, where a certain number should agree on the way forward. We have heard that the chairman of the league class, Kujo Fianu, wants to call a meeting to see the way forward. But even before the meeting could take place, there was this statement from the FA that five members have been appointed, one as spokesperson, all that thing. <laughs> the reality is that Palisco. whether the FA likes it or not, yes. the government is a major yes. stakeholder yeah, yeah. in Ghana football. Yeah. Mm. And if a crisis like this happens, there's no way that Ghana football can go on if the government doesn't also uh, come and say. Why do I say so? One, the facilities that the 
clubs and the national teams use most of these facilities are owned by government uh. two the safety and security at all these venues including the ones not owned by government are provided by government so you're saying government is trying government, to do this government is a major stakeholder on in a situation of blackmail not blackmail no. on behalf of the people of ghana government is a major stakeholder and any responsible government should make sure that things are stabilized not just because the president has resigned then everything is okay every responsible government now from what has happened if you allow a match to proceed the next day and people are not happy about with the conduct of the referee <laughs> based on what they've watched this is business as usual and are you going to sit down for them to take the law into their own hands? So it's become a state, uh, an issue of security too, national safety security. Safety and security. Safety and security overrides everything. If you read our constitution, you say individual entitled to your liberties, blah, 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 subject to. Subject to comes in because safety and security overrides everything. So I think the way forward is for whoever they agree to represent the FA now to sit down with government draw a roadmap, look at some of the things which don't go well for football administration in this country, and then move on. For instance, I don't understand why we used to have the chairman of the league clubs as automatic vice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they take it out. That thing has been taken off. Yeah. And now it's the president who yeah. appoints the vice. So, yeah. the president uh, yeah, appoints the, the, the statutes. Mm -hmm. The statutes were changed. Well, it's changed. Was the president was in 2013. That was wrong. The president was in 2013. That is not what... Yeah. Used to pertain. Yanchaji himself was chairman of the league clubs. He was automatic vice to Yahuta Maplo. And when Yahuta Maplo resigned, he acted until they went for elections and he became the, the chairman. Later on to be president. So, whether we like it or not, we are in serious crisis as far as football is concerned. And we should all sit down and see the way forward. When you were. As for. Mm -hmm. The ways and means thing. Me, I don't agree with that. <laughs> but you were deputy sportsman. Yes. Were you approached look, in any look, way, look, let's say by, look, used to, by the national team players, by handlers oh, of the national team? Nobody will even dare. <laughs> Why not? I want, I want anybody in the whole world to come and say that I influence anybody to play in the national team. Nobody will dare. Like, or perhaps look, maybe I was, look, I was running a football team in someone at Capim South United. There were a lot of young boys who were, in, who were interested in football. I teamed up with the late Kujo Kwashi who was then running yeah. road banks, yeah. to turn it to Kapim South United. The team was doing so well. We spent so much money on the team. They got to the middle league, <laughs> and I had information that I should come and pay money before my team qualified. Which year was that? Well, 2000, 2007, 2008. I, I stopped. Fully, I disbanded the whole team. And when you became deputy sportsman, did you try to find out? I was, I was deputy sportsman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For did anybody to have the f to tell me that, mm. come and pay before your team will qualify, for Middle League. I said, no way. And, and you as Deputy Sports Minister, did you try to find out why we have some of If Kwesinia if Techi will bear me out, I complain bitterly to him. I watch the way you are running the game. These are rumors going around. Somebody has even had the opportunity to pass a message to my manager. That if I want to uh, qualify to the next division, from second division to first division, doing the Middle League, it means there should be some exchange of money. I was interested. I was interested. That was, the, that was the end of the team. Everybody would tell me from in some home. So this business of ways and means or is done, that is what we have encouraged and now is is done with impunity. It's done with impunity. And it's blown up in our face. Yes. Look at May 9. May 9, people were not happy with the conduct of the referee. They didn't have any right to be violent. People started throwing all that they could throw. Chairs that had been installed, they threw them. The police had to use tear gas. People wanted to escape. They couldn't mm -hmm. escape. They lost their lives. The root cause, the outcome of the match, which I always say that you don't have any business being violent if you are not happy with the referee. But if subsequently it's coming out that indeed referees determine outcome of matches in a very crude way, and we don't sit down to see how we avert this, then the, that's the end of the game. Mm -hmm. One, people will refuse to watch. I always complain that my 17-year-old boy is so knowledgeable about football, you don't have any idea. But he's not interested in Ghana football. 
And I, I, I'm he always likes Barcelona, I, Real Madrid. I'm Chelsea. always sad because Manchester when I was United. going, my father would hold my hand to go and watch Ghana football at any time. Actually, May 9, 2000, I was in the stadium. My I team was is Portugal. So when we I was West Coast, then I left. I was sitting there, I was even crying yeah. for the mm. because it got to a point he was very annoyed about the referee's decisions. You see him taking yes, yes, from yes. his seat and just going to and said, ah, but you, you are the boss. Don't you do this? How about those in the sun? As if I knew what was going to happen. But the reality is that if this is what is going on in Ghana football, and we think that we can keep quiet and just change names and make it business as usual, we will all be in trouble. Okay, we'll come we'll back. We'll talk about the steps that FIFA. we've taken. Damn FIFA! Mm. <laughs> FIFA should be the first to come mm. here and say that. But how do we sit down to promote a game? Well, we because have literature we and, and, and regulations of FIFA, which yes, is an indication we also have otherwise. Interest. Well, I know that what the interest would be, but your own personal experiences before we go, uh, because you talk about ways and means. In my own personal experiences, from my junior high school days, or what we call GSS at the time, we did various processes and categories of ways and means from the spiritual angle, mm -hmm. then we did the monetary angle, then we did the one on the field angle. Mm -hmm. So, uh, your own experiences, uh, if you want to share some with us. The ways and means? Yeah. Well, oh, <laughs> don't, don't, don't dignify don't ways and means. <laughs> don't dignify ways and means. I mean, I mean, I mean, like Obi said. Because it's, uh, it's, it's our own actions it's, it's, and inactions that have got exactly, us where we are. Exactly. See, if we run away with the reality, mm. if we run away yeah. and we, 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 we have a problem, how do we change the reality? The, the, the reality now is that going forward, now mm -hmm. everybody, anybody who is going to be part and parcel of the football fraternity, be referees, be administrators, we now have to sit up. Mm. We now have to sit up because it has yeah. hit us hard in the face. It has, we, we are now at ground zero. Now Ghana football is at ground zero. As to how we are going to get out of that ground zero, like Obi said, we need to do... You see, in the past, there was a situation where the government, because of having a stakeholder in the, food, uh, in the sports uh, 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 fraternity administration, administration we will nominate two people. One will have to be elected and one become a board member. And then the clubs also brings mm -hmm. their vice chairman to be there. Uh, vice chairman of the FA. The chairman becomes and vice. And the, the, that's right. So, so there's sort of collaboration. And then the chairman is appointed by government. Yes. yes. But, but, so but, 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 the, but the clubs uh, or the football fraternity will have to approve, will, will have to approve or yes. disapprove. They submit the two names. Exactly. One is made a chairman. You know, one is made a member. Yeah. And, and this is for a four-year term. So there are certain checks and balances. Because if you are not doing it, the government has, has a stake in it. So the government can remove you at any time. And also, you don't go beyond two terms. The maximum you can go is two, uh, two terms, and, and that's it. So there were a little, some checks and balances, and I think it was working well. But here's a situation where all those things were jettisoned, and then you had only the president by virtue. You know, when he was going to contest us, I took them to court, because I, I believe, I remember. I, you remember, because <laughs> my argument was that there is somebody who should be tenant overwriting. Which, uh, which, year, which of the nations? The original to, one. The original, the original one. You contested. No, I, no, I, took, I, I, I put an injunction on them. Mm. Yes. Because I, my, I argument, my argument no, was that. My, five, five, six. Five, five. I said my argument was that he was the one who should be tenant over the writing of the statutes. And then he is the, he's the same person going to. So the arbitrage. No, the, 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 one, the one that mm. elected him as, a, yes, as, as, chairman. as, a, as chairman at that time. Right, and I felt it was wrong, but you cannot write it and then you yourself. So, because of and, and, and look at what has happened. So, if they are listening to us earlier on, because probably will not be where we are today. So, he then rose to be, become so powerful, and okay. you know that uh, after 13 years, he, he became so powerful that he okay. was deciding the, 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 the fate of right. every even the, they've got this an emergency. Committee. Committee. He has to appoint his own people. So if they, eventually you have sickle fans around you. Okay. You understand? Well. So this is what we have to do now. We have to go back, probably look at what was in the past and what has happened and see how quickly we can blend blend this thing these two together. Because government of the day, look, if, if government, every government 
has an interest. Because football is the opium of the masses. They have got into If the football, if, if the black stars are not doing they don't blame the GFA. It's the government who, who takes the heat. You understand? So you cannot ask the, the, the government to divorce itself uh, from, from the, and now you want to evoke FIFA. Like I said, FIFA themselves recently had the FBI coming all the way from America to come and arrest their, mm. their, their, their FIFA president. Yeah, I have, I have a, fr a, a mate of mine, uh, Cesar <laughs> Bagali, says, I worked closely with Obi Amwan when he was the deputy minister. Mm -hmm. If he's, he's been put in the wrong ministry, he can mm -hmm. be one of the finest, best post ministers mm -hmm. if given the chance. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Who started? Campaign. But as you want to add, yeah. um, FIFA, uh, as part of its own fiat, uh, has a number of um, question and answer sessions on, on its page, FIFA.com. And it says, what exactly is political interference? Mm -hmm. And then they say, um, the the uh, the associations have the obligations to do it on their own in an autonomous way without outside interference yeah. from the government or any other parties. In general, political interference is when government tries to take direct control. Mm -hmm. Now let's go on. They say the most common case of political interference is when a government perceives that the executive committee of the national association is not performing well enough and decides to take action we can do to this as part of this oh. now however fifa says we are not against government nor do we encourage our member associations to work in opposition of the government on the contrary we constantly try to establish a good atmosphere and cooperation with government on the premise of this well yeah. um, the actions we have taken is it as part of the start of the reforms. And in what way should the reforms be? Do we collapse everything and start afresh? Do it in conjunction with FIFA? Well, well, I, I was a leader of the education to FIFA in 2005, when Ghana football was the sort of, um, instability, not crisis at that time, instability, in the sense that it, the then chairman had resigned, and then FIFA was insisting that government should stop appointing uh, chairpersons for the FA. They should go for diet lessons. We went to FIFA. I met Seth Blatter. We discussed. The compromise was the public interest committee, that the, there should be a committee that the government will be represented on so that the public interest will be catered for. As to whether the public interest committee has been working is another matter. As you have read, government has made certain statements. We read the information minister statement, of course, who, which was based on the consultation he had with the president. That we this cannot go on. There should be steps to sanitize the whole thing, if it even means dissolution of the FA. And steps include the registrar general coming in to see that what the objects that you registered the association for, whether you are pursuing the objects, whether you've submitted your accounts, whether you have fulfilled all the requirements under the law. And if she finds anything that you have done wrong, she's at liberty to send it to attorney general, who can also go to court to say that because of these things, we don't think that this particular association is serving the purpose for which it was set up. And I've already told you the subscribers themselves now, but you can about three of them issues have been raised, or if it's, even if it's two, the one who is also there has been dismissed. So, government has a responsibility to get involved with this, and government is not going to appoint an FE chairman or president. Government is not doing that, but government wants to see that the right things are done, so that the public itself will be satisfied. The public will pay. Look, there's so much money in football, so much money elsewhere. It, it contributes to the GDP in a big way. The only unfortunate thing is that people here think that if there's money in football, it means collecting 300 from from a club to determine the outcome of a match. That's not where you make your money. If the FA is run very well and money pours in, that is where you share and people will get their share. Look, when the blasters was trying to qualify for the World Cup. And people saw that the Blasters were becoming very 
marketable, too. very marketable to be associated with. Companies were keen to sponsor the national team. I remember very well, Guinness Ghana Limited at that time did everything to be part of the Blasters. One day, they came to the office. We discussed that and said, ah, people, we need a first class modern um, bus. Then they, ah, that's what happened. Then they said, okay, then we'll provide you the bus. So that we we'll put our name there, official That's sponsors. how we had those yes. uh, nice coaches. Yes. That coach. When we qualified, even kids sponsors were chasing us. Every company where they sought thought that they should associate the name, their name with the Blasters. So if we run the game well, money will come in, and the referees will be paid well, my commission will be paid well, officers who work at the FA will be paid well, and not this 300, 500 business where they, I, you, I, I've been a tax man for over 10 years before I stopped. Our first transition class, Mr. I, who taught us, said, don't cheap in yourself. If you're a first class referee, it's your worth 300 or 500. The people themselves will know that you don't cheap yourself, so they can't buy you. You go and handle your match, and everybody knows that. So now, how, what do we go? Do we collapse and start, or we we just shuffle and bring in? I, as I said, the clubs say they are meeting. The government on this side too expects certain meetings with FIFA, with the clubs, with other stakeholders. What the way forward is for us to sit down to let the whole public know that what has gone on is unacceptable, cannot be counted as, and this is the way forward. Not just people putting people on committees, no. referees appointments committee, uh, player status committee, yes committees without any integrity. And you bring the whole game down, and then you come and complain that people are not patronizing yeah, made in Ghana football. So, I, 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 because I'm on government side, I've been speaking to those in charge, and the thing that the way forward is for all of us to sit down. But this present GFA is no more. No more in the sense that where are the heads? How can you have an, an entity without heads? The president has resigned, the vice president has been sacked, emergency committee without president and vice, you can't convene. And so, what business is that? If the clubs think that they can salvage everything, so be it. Even the regional football association, their heads, they are resigning. Yeah, some of them were implicated. Yes, they are resigning, and mm -hmm. those who don't resign are implicated would have to go. This is irrespective of the fact that the police too is doing their own investigations. If they come out with all these things, they, they will have to then pursue those processes in court. Where should the current reforms be undertaken? Or no, that has just started. Uh, we're just seeing the beginning of it. Where should it lead us? What, what should we see in five years? Or let's say a year from now. How do we want the structure of the administrators of our football be like? Yeah, I mean, now, like uh, Obi said earlier on, most people that are running the football now are all implicated. I mean, even, even if even they are not implicated, for the fact that they are part of that system, they, they become endangered species now. The question is, where are we going to get others to come on board? And that is what the club should sit down and look at. A year now, we should be having a football that is, uh, that, that, that even though it, it cannot be to the standard of the European system, but in Africa, we should be able to, 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 to be a, a force to reckon with. Our, our league is dead. It is virtually dead. Right, because of this attribute that have gone on. The, the, the league is virtually dead. So it will take a long, you are not talking about one year, two, three years, before even Ghanaians who have confidence in the system. Now, all the referees that have, uh, have implicated will have to go. You are talking about almost 90% of the referee fraternity. So a new system has to, be, has to be put in place to ensure that we are able to, go, to recruit the referees who, who will be above board going forward. The, 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 I said we are now at ground zero. And at ground zero, everything is, everything is, is, is gone. How do you put the structures back? So the clubs must meet. And also the clubs must even sanitize themselves because they are part of the system, right? Whatever has gone wrong. And you see, I think one of the problems that 
we, we, we have had over the years is the fact that the traditional clubs, the traditional clubs, Cornerstone, B United, Azakes, all those clubs. He's looking for opportunity to mention his club. <laughs> Olympics. Olympics. Let me, let me add Olympics to it. As a folk. Oh, no. no. That have, have all disappeared. And that also has devalued the. Because imagine Olien yeah. has playing at Accra Sports Stadium. Olien Kotoko. You know, Hazakes and Wise. You, you, you can imagine. Now you have, I don't want to mention them. Those teams that have come on board, right? You can cut their supporters on your, on your fingertips. So people are not interested. So we have to look at all this. How are we going to restructure the whole system? Because at least we are now we've been in a position to encourage these traditional clubs to come back to the system. But probably because of the corruption that had gone on, uh, Olympics were relegated recently because of an act of referee. A referee who, instead of giving a yellow card or something to some somebody gave it the wrong he claimed that he gave the wrong person but by that virtue Olympics were relegated so you can say the Olympics going to relegation was part of an activity of a, of a, of a referee somebody won the league will you say that the league that he won was because the referees were influenced hmm. so so we, ha we, ha we have a long way to go not one year two years three years but we need a holistic and uh, all, all everybody must come on board our people out there the spectators they should also profess some uh, the way forward. Everybody, it's not only the club that should do it. All it's of a whole us, football fraternity. All the yeah. football must, must come and profess all the right. way forward. All right. So we hope government will take the lead too. Very well. Oh, certainly, and then, certainly. And then you collaborate yeah. with FIFA because certainly. we don't have problem based on what we're reading. No, you see, let, let me tell you about this FIFA monster. We have to. The, yeah, yeah. Let, FIFA cannot come and tell us what to do when the thing is rotten. They would rather appreciate what we are doing. So people That's should, why the collaboration Yeah, people should stop FIFA, 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 FIFA. <laughs> We've said this long. Any time the government wants to move in, then they'll quote FIFA. But um, the FIFA itself... It's the main reason why we're here, right? How, Everything how, they said that FIFA... How did FIFA have... Uh, 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 they got their ethics committee? Because of what happened to Sir Blatter. The, before, there was no ethics committee. They were doing whatever they wanted. But because FBI came in, they put up an ethics committee that now has sanitized FIFA. Well, it was also a corrupt entity. Uh, 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 votes were sold. That's why I was telling the OB that it's not something that is new. FIFA, well, they were selling, you know, you remember the South African, uh, I think a certain country, where somebody... Also of, also of the work. That's right, South Africa lost, because the guy from Australia or whatever it is, had to sell his vote the last minute, you know. So, so FIFA itself had been faced with these corrupt practices for a long time. If it has come to Ghana, let us stop mention FIFA and I see FIFA will come in. If FIFA bans us for five years, I'm happy about that. <laughs> well, Joseph Nia de Coca, chairman of NDC Greater Craft. I've enjoyed the discussion. Mm -hmm. So, be um, And he's, he's a current deputy minister for uh, local government and road development. But in the meantime, has been also uh, a former deputy um, minister for sports helping us do great discussions, has great insight, had a football team, I apparently didn't know that. <laughs> He's a man of mm -hmm. the game. Mm -hmm. But please, getting interactive um, is good for you because we want more of your messages on our various uh, social media platforms, Facebook journeys on TV. Also, give us more of your messages on, on Twitter through our handle, our journeys on TV. 